Okay, that's interesting. I, I actually never knew that. Hello, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Mario. Welcome back to the channel. Remember, we are real apostolics with real problems, with real solutions, all solved in a divine way. I am the creator of this channel and I'm so happy to have you all here. Before we go any further, do not forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Hit notification bell so you know every time that I upload a new video. Remember, we are on a march right now to hit 1,000 subscribers. I really want to hit that goal and I need your all's help. So help, help a brother out. But uh, today we're going to do something fun. Um, I have not done one of these videos in a very, very long time. I got a lot of great feedback from my last one, and it's uh, simply a reaction video. It's a reaction video to a certain topic, a certain theme. Uh, in today's video, I found um, a BuzzFeed video that says, People tell a pastor why they don't believe in God. I thought that was a really interesting title. I am watching this for the first time. So I'm very excited to see um, what this is going to be about. I'll put in my two cents every so often during the video. But with no further ado, let's start. I don't personally believe, right? Mm -hmm. But it's like, that doesn't mean that we can't live mm -hmm. the same life. Hey there, I'm Erica Campbell. I'm a singer, a songwriter. I'm a mom, a wife, and all around cool chick. So today I'm sitting down with people from different ends. Okay. Uh... First thing, um, this may offend some people, but uh, women pastors, I still have not seen any evidence in the Bible to suggest that a woman should be a pastor. Now, I'm not saying that women can't do a great thing in the ministry because, to be honest, our church would be nothing without the countless of women that help in the ministry and the church in general. But I have not seen any evidence to suggest that a woman should be a pastor. For example, Jesus chose 12 disciples, all happened to be men. Mary did follow along, but she was never chosen as a disciple. God created man in the garden to tend uh, over it, and he chose uh, Eve to be the helper of it, but ultimately it was his responsibility. And um, yeah, I, I just haven't seen enough evidence to suggest that women should be pastors. So anyways, that's neither there nor there. Let's continue of the faith spectrum. We're just going to have a healthy conversation. Can't wait to get into it. I'm really excited. My name is Josh and I am a former Christian. Hi, I'm Emily and I identify as an atheist. My name is Nina and I identify as agnostic. I was raised in a very strict Mormon household. I was the very first one in my family to leave the church. I have been a happy non-believer ever since. I guess technically I was raised in the Catholic faith kind of by default. We went to church sometimes on Christmas, usually like weddings or funerals, something like that. I grew up lightly Hindu. Uh, we're like culturally Hindu, but I kind of came to the conclusion that like whether or not there is a God or there isn't a God, like it has no bearing on like how I live my life. <clears throat> okay, so a um, couple things to address there. Uh, Mormonism has so many different cult-like aspects to it. Um, the, the Church of the Latter-day Saints, um, them believing in that Book of Mormon that, that Jesus spoke to Joseph Smith some 1,600 years uh, after he gave all his words to the apostles. And, and this guy actually has all the rest of the answers that are not answered in the Bible itself. Some very, very um, uh, um, problematic things there because one person wrote a multitude of books rather than in the version that we read, King James Version, it was a multitude of people that wrote a multitude of books. So very, very problematic there. The second thing, Hinduism um, has a couple of problems because they believe in multiple gods. So the title says, people tell a pastor why they don't believe in God. So I guess in Hinduism, you'd have to ask which God she does not believe in. But anyways... Let's move forward. I don't think she'll be able to in any way convert me suddenly back. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous. Like, I hope I don't say anything to offend her. Hey. Hey there. I'm Josh. I'm Erica. Hi. I'm Emily. Erica. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Hey. Hi. 
Nice to meet you. you Nina? Yes, I'm, I'm Nina. Erica. Nice to meet you. So I'm a Christian. How would you identify? Uh, atheist. Atheist. Non-believer. Okay. So do you believe that like there's there's no God or there's something out there and you don't know what it is? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> I identify as an atheist. Mm -hmm. If like agnosticism and atheism is, is like a spectrum, I'm like somewhere in it. I think that when we die, it's lights out and that's the blissful end to all of it. Is and that bliss though? Like it that? is. So let me ask you a question. What do you believe exists beyond the universe? It's like the area where our minds kind of exist, not the human, not the tangible. I don't think that that exists either. You don't? I don't. I think that everything that exists mm -hmm. is what exists right here, right now, mm -hmm. in this moment, in your body. I was raised in the Catholic community. A couple things uh, about that, what he said, that I would like to make a comment on is um, when you think about God, you have to think there has to be something intelligent that put all of this together. For example, uh, uh, one of my favorite um, uh, apologists, Frank Turek, he always puts this into perspective. He says, when you see a painting, those colors did not just splatter there by random, by chance. There had to have been some intelligent, creative designer behind that painting. And so when you think of the universe itself and how perfect it is and how the earth is in the exact location it needs to be, if it were if it were 10 miles farther away from the sun, it would freeze to death. It would be if it were 10 miles closer to the sun, it would completely go into flames. Um so where everything is perfectly uh, place, there had to have been some creative design behind it. And so our answer, we know as apostolics to be Jesus Christ, the one who created it all. He was father in creation, son in redemption, and now he works in the Holy Spirit in the church. So uh, for him to just think it's just there and, and, and this moment is what matters, there had to have been someone that created that moment for you to think that. Otherwise, what do you? Where did those thoughts come from? They just don't come from from thin air, right? It came from an intelligent designer who created you. Move forward. I just remember the first thing we talked about was Adam and Eve, and I just remember being like, "That's just like a little story." But culturally, we're Hindu. Personally, for me, it felt like a lot of these, a lot of the stories of it, or they're just like stories. Uh, there's a lot of like people with multiple arms and like angels are blue, uh, which is like not real. So I was raised Mormon. Uh, my mom helped run the Relief Society. My dad was a bishop for a long time. My wow. grandpa was a bishop. I was the very first member of my family to walk away from it all. And they respond to that. Not well at first. <laughs> uh -huh. I grew up similar to you, but mine was a Pentecostal church called the Church of God in Christ. And my father was a preacher. My mom was over the choir. Um, but there was a lot of things that didn't always make sense to me, like why we were so poor. You know, you know if you live for <laughs> Jesus, everything's supposed to work out right. You know, but the same way, I wouldn't doubt love because. Ooh, uh, that's that's a little sour. Um, I don't like that answer at all. Um, Jesus himself was poor. He said in the Bible that I, that that I think it was men who follow after me or the son of man does not even have a his uh, a place to rest his own head. So uh, I'm already a little skeptical of what she kind of believes um, based on kind of some of her jewelry and just her own attire. She she may be part of the prosperity gospel, which is extremely dangerous because God never preached a message um, about being rich. He said, you would not be rich here on earth, but you would store your riches in heaven where neither moth nor rust nor thieves can get to it. But he never talked about being rich here on earth. All your riches will be in heaven. And uh, the fact that all the apostles were, were dead broke and, and went from country to country should be a huge testament that us as believers probably are not going to be rich. Uh, Jesus said it like this, that it is harder for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to get into heaven. So that should be a huge warning there. Rich or poor, God really doesn't care because we're all going to leave this behind anyways. Because people have gotten love wrong. And that's kind of how I feel about God. And I think it's very reassuring to me that after this is over, there's something greater. So most people who don't believe there was some, you know, traumatic church experience or some mm -hmm. long line of this doesn't make sense, this doesn't make sense, this doesn't make sense. Okay, y'all don't make sense, so maybe he doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. I do find fault 
with like Catholicism in general. We're not really like practicing, so we weren't like praying or like studying or anything. And so I just kind of like fell away from that as like, as a religion. I grew up in a church where secular music was a saying, everybody was the devil, you know, you can't interact, you know, it's gonna infiltrate you. My mom, her favorite saying growing up was that the devil gets to you in little way. I think that was taken really bad out of context. Uh, when we talk about, when us apostolics talk about not not interacting with the world, it's, you gotta make sure where you're spending your time. Like, you don't go to a bar and to witness to people because you'll get sucked into their environment, right? You can take the bar people out of the bar and into the church, and that is perfectly acceptable. But you have to be very, very, very cautious of where you spend your time. And, I mean... 1 John 2.15 says, Do not love the world, neither things of this world. Anyone that loves the world does not love the Father. Does not, have, does not have the love of the Father in them. So, no idea what she's talking about. That was very poorly worded, if I understood her correctly. Is, yes. Like the first time I wanted a mohawk at nine years old, <laughs> she was like, devil gets to you through your hair. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm got really lucky and I have like great parents and mm -hmm. you know they were like you know be kind be a good person yeah. like help each other out blah 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 yeah. um so I feel like my moral compass is good I, I hope so I think so <laughs> I'm working on it the core of Mormon belief is the holy bible mm -hmm. the King James version yeah. specifically yeah. every <clears throat> you can't have a moral compass uh without having God being the standard right without being their laws showing what is good and what is bad. So if you are if you have your own moral compass, you're always gonna be on the right. You got nothing to uh, judge you. You've got nothing to hold you accountable, right? Every time I read something, what I saw was a twist for human gain. Mm -hmm. I know all the same stories and had, I had the very same questions. Um, and what I feel like Okay, that's interesting. I, I actually never knew that. I, from what I understood, the, the Mormons have, I, I, this is new to me, but I did not realize that, that they did read the King James Version. Now, this is a person who fell away from Mormonism, so I'm not sure how accurate his, his testimony is. But uh, again, like I had mentioned in the beginning, they've got the Mormon Bible plus the regular Bible, and they think that the Mormon Bible complements and fills in all the answers that's not answered in the King James Version. Now what I know the Bible is, it is all an example of how crazy and chaotic our world is. If you believed in God, what would that look like to you? I feel like if there was a God, I think it would be something like kind of unimaginable that I couldn't mm -hmm. like process as a human yeah. being. Do you believe in life after? You know, I I don't. You know, before I was like, I don't know, maybe like raw energy, like mm -hmm. what happens to us when we're dead. Like, and nobody knows. And that's mm -hmm. the crazy thing, right? And uh, but uh, very recently, actually, my twin brother passed away this summer, mm -hmm. and so Sorry I've been. That. Thank you. But I've been, you know, like searching for him, and I've been like trying to be kind of like open, like if you know, if it is like a thing, like please. Yeah freaking talk to me you know yeah. what I mean and like I just I haven't I haven't felt it yeah. I haven't felt him I haven't seen him yeah. and so that kind of for me was like okay like he's just yeah. he's just dead mm -hmm. and that's you know something that I'm just kind of like okay like mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just never gonna see him again he's still you know with me every day and I think about him every single day mm -hmm. but it's like I just you know I was I was open for it and mm -hmm. I, I still am like yeah. if, if something were to happen or whatever yeah. but like you know, me thinking about him every day and remembering him and everything that I do, it's like, I feel like that for me is like enough, mm -hmm. you know? Every time I look at any form of organized religion, the only thing... I, I really feel for that girl. Um, I, I think of the three people I've seen so far, she would be the one to um, convert to Christianity the easiest because she's experienced death in her life. She's had a family member pass away. And she wants answers. She wants comfort to all that. And the only one that can bring comfort to that is going to be Jesus Christ. So I think of all the people I've seen so far, I think she's the one that, that has the biggest chance to really believe in God. She just uh, really needs to, to open up her heart. She needs to, uh, this, this, this woman needs to talk about um, sin and, and just really open that, open that up and, and, and bring her to the realization that we all do need a savior. And I think that would be the very first step to her 
to her finding Jesus Christ. I see as division. Mm -hmm. More wars have been fought over religion than mm -hmm. anything else. Yeah. Whereas when I look at a world with no religion, mm -hmm. you suddenly, everyone has to own up to just what they are and who they are. They yeah. can no longer hide behind and say, well, I, I won't bake a cake for these gay couple because my religion says that I don't have to. Mm -hmm. You can't hide behind that. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be conflict in religion because religion is man-made. She does bring a good point here that uh, that religion is, is man-made um, because man-made thoughts have, have poisoned, have diluted God's word. And, and they've twisted certain things there. So she just brings up a really great valid argument there. I actually will agree with her on that point. Um, and there's always going to be conflict because the, you're fighting the truth against lies, right? And those two don't mix together. Those will always be in and battle, I'll always be in conflict with one another. So... She did bring up a, a pretty good point there. You know, you see these movies and there's always a devil on one shoulder mm -hmm. and an angel. I really think that's real. I think there's always a battle for the best of us and the worst of us. If there was one question of God that you could ask if you believed in God, what would you ask? That's a really hard one. <laughs> Is it? Uh, I, uh, Girl, I ask everything. <laughs> and there would probably be a lot of general just like whys. Mm -hmm. um, but he cares about you. And that's what I know Does for he? sure. <laughs> yes. You. What makes you happy? What I'm, makes you sad? I feel so small. And no. like the concept of a God mm -hmm. feels so big, like I said. Yeah. And I feel so small. And it seems impossible to me that anything that oversees like mm -hmm. our whole world or our whole universe mm -hmm. would have time for me. Absolutely. <laughs> if I told you that I would pray for you, what would you ask me to pray for? Oh, that's a great question. Probably not for me, but for like my family, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Just. I always think that is so ironic that those, the majority of people who don't believe in God will accept prayers. What, why would you accept it if you don't believe like that the prayers aren't doing anything, that they're not answering, that there is no, there's not a listener on the other side. Um, I always thought that was really ironic that that they will. I mean, don't get me wrong; it's a good thing, right? But if you were, if you truly didn't believe in anything um, outside uh, of the earth and, and that there is no God, uh, what would you? Why would you accept it? For them to be like well and good and happy. Yeah, believe in you know. If there's a good, there has to be a bad. You know, we can't always explain some of the complexities and craziness of this world, but I think God brings gravity to it all, to the question. This has been such a great conversation and you're such a warm, like, I feel really like comfortable <laughs> here. Good. Um, yeah, just, this has been really great. Awesome. It's been amazing talking to you. Great talking to you, Emily. I well. will be praying for you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, that's all of it for today. Um, I think there is a couple of good points in there um, and like I said midway through the midway through the video I believe the 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 girl with the backwards hat would be the one closest um, to 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 probably come to Christianity maybe not now but in in the future um, you know with enough prayers uh, I think she could because um, I think she ultimately wants to fill that void of why her brother died um, and, and that's going to be a conflict of her that's, that she wants to get answered. So, hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure you to like and subscribe. Comment down below if you want to see any more videos like this of reacting. Uh, leave a video in the comments or, yeah, leave a video in the comments if you want me to react to it. Uh, if, I, if it's good enough, um, uh, based off the title and everything, I will do my best to give you a true, true reaction of it. But anyways... Thank you all. I love you all. We are praying that you all are safe and well where you are at. God bless you.